Well, believe it or not, it's November 29th, and it's really nice weather out here in the mid-50s, I think. I'm just uh, taking advantage of this weather. It's a nice blessing. And um, I'm going to shelter my wood and do some wood splitting. <clears throat> um, I have been putting together a little little shelter made from the old fence that I got. It's just the pieces left from that. Oh, that took an entire day. This is the second day on this. So I've been trying to reinforce this as much as I can. It's pretty sturdy. But I'll be accessing it from the back. Because all the weather always comes this way. Snow, rain, and everything. So I think as long as I just keep most of the snow off of it, it'll probably be alright. And I'm going to cover it with some more wood. I was just starting to think of long-term stuff, long, long-term technology, and I don't think we're going to need to have wood-burning stoves necessarily in the long-term future. I do like them, um, enjoy them, but it's something to rely on as as far as like a main heat source. Not a, not everybody can do that, and uh, there are places like you know, western Montana or in a foresty area where you just have abundance of wood for everybody. But this is like in the Midwest and Iowa and you, you don't have a lot of uh, trees unless somebody's, you know, cut down a tree and giving you free wood or you have to, you can uh, buy it from somebody. And so it's, and if everybody was using it, it, it just wouldn't be sustainable. We have to figure out how we can heat a house without uh, the, the furnaces that we always use using the normal methods we always use and there are other several ideas that, that we can um, do that are just way better and so um, I'm going to post some links down below of the sources that I'm that you could uh, look up a lot of these different ideas that will spark some, some new ideas that we've never heard of and um, I am a fan of uh, hydrogen gas that you can uh, produce just from water and I, I keep thinking about that and I, I've seen a lot of technology of you know people uh, making it work so it's it's safe to use you could store hydrogen you could um, there are a couple of different ways of doing that and um, but it's so abundant just all you need is uh, water or water source doesn't have to be clean water even you just make you know just you can you can get that gas very easily and then there's um, other ideas of just using um, a free energy electric source and I'm working on concepts with that and I, I never listen to naysayers with this stuff so I always look at what what is going to work and what is possible and how can we overcome uh, the certain things um, in a certain great idea. I was also mentioning about this guy, how he heated and cooled his home with a natural way of just how he positioned his home in accordance with the sun. And you can see the sun is mostly on a southern angle. And so there's a couple videos um, that are really good to watch and it's very informative and it got me onto this concept actually and two examples of uh, people doing this very thing just with a natural position you can have a, um, a a natural cooling or heating effect they uh, did this in Arizona and one of one part Arizona was in Prescott Arizona where they have all four seasons and the guy that I was talking about, he he built his house in a way where the the heat of the sun would hit certain parts of his home, and then cause this natural uh, vacuum effect or this uh, circulation of air, just like you know God does it with his with when you feel the wind and the breeze, it's because the heat of the sun is warming up the air. Uh, and the cooler air naturally just wants to flow. And so some people have seen the outhouses where they have like a tube 
like a vent system that looks like that and it's painted black or it's black in color and so that outhouse or the uh, latrine or whatever it is at a recreational park or something you have that natural heat that hits that tube that vent tube and then that the warmer air naturally flows up and then down in the latrine in the chamber it that's where it, it sucks all the air from there and that natural vacuum effect that uh, concept is easy to understand and you can apply that concept to uh, heating and cooling not just venting something uh, but that's what this guy did when he built his home and he he cut out uh, dug out part of the earth he dug it in the, the southern part so the the doors were were towards the north and that way the heat would the from the sun would be protected because it's buried in the earth but he could also use it for that concept of heating part of the the home but when he opens a window that heat just naturally draws out of his house and then he opens a door on the north side where it's cooler that breeze comes in i know it's a really old video that he's talking about when he's talking but halfway through the video he'll do a walkthrough of his house and it's just amazing he talks about air wells as well that's where i first caught on to the concept i'll uh, post a link down below where you can learn more about those things but you could you could uh, make these yourself he this guy in the video that made that house he built an air well out of rocks just make a mound of rocks with way for the wind to blow through it and then kind of a column a uh, rock column or something with the rocks pointed downwards so whenever it goes through there the air goes through the air cools down within that little dome of rocks and then it just condenses upon the the, the column of rocks in the center and then it drips down and that's this basic concept you could do that same thing with a with a chest uh, a chest cooler just crack it open away from the sun so when the wind blows through it it's cooler inside and it'll just collect water and he said uh, he you could make a bigger one he was gonna make a bigger one and it'll provide all the water he would ever need um, just because of the uh, certain um, polycarbon plastics I think so it's just basically uh, certain plastics are more can uh, cause the effect even more or something. Uh, my tiny house shed does have a cooling effect. I put an air gap right between the sheeting and the, the, the walls so it's not touching the walls. And it, it acts as a heat shield. I had this super easy to do, not very much more effort if you're going to build a shed or a house or anything it's just it's like putting it in the shade but there's so much more i was talking about uh heat pumps and stuff like that you know that's one concept that's the the air conditioning dehumidifier technology concept that we already have but it uses the same concept and that could be used in uh, a lot colder climates it just goes into the earth and collects the heat that's always down under the ground and then just brings it back up. I do like wood stoves, but uh, with these concepts, I mean, we're, we can have alternatives that don't cost anything. I'm going to be uh, doing a lot more of that in this, this, and in my future home here. So as I fix it, keep, uh, stay curious, just like a little child and stay excited got a lot of great technology coming I'm gonna do a video about air wells because those are I keep coming across more of the that concept and um, that it's never been a better m more of a need for that and like uh, when you can't dig a well or there's no, no rain or something it's an awesome alternative uh, concept you could do it yourself try it with a chest freezer uh, see if you could try I'm gonna try it and um, just if you understand the concept you can get creative with whatever else you want to do with it it doesn't cost you anything so that's my goal here my channel trying to find common items that you could use and just make awesome off-grid stuff 
Let's get independent.